Fujifilm has officially announced their new flagship APS-C camera, the X-H2S. It introduces significant changes and potentially a new direction for the company as well. Change is good and necessary. However, this camera may make some of you wonder if Fujifilm's philosophy is changing. If you're wondering about this, then this video is for you. Hi friends, welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Jorge. On this channel, we talk about photography and filmmaking, merging creativity and productivity to live a fulfilling life. And in today's video, we're talking about the recently announced Fujifilm X-H2S and why that camera represents change for Fujifilm. If you are familiar with my channel, then you know that I enjoy using Fujifilm cameras for the shooting experience. That's the reason why I review older use equipment, to eliminate the barriers to entry and to get more people exposed to the craft. The act of grabbing your favorite camera, going out there, taking photographs and enjoying the process is equally as important as the results that you get, the photographs that you take. So, when I see Fujifilm remove things that make the shooting experience or the shooting process enjoyable, like the manual controls and dials, it really begs the question, what's going on here? I personally don't think there's a lot to worry about, but I would still like to discuss some of the changes on the camera and why Fujifilm decided to label the X-H2S as a flagship camera. Let's get started. In general, it's good to see some of these companies progress and see the technology develop over time. Some of these additions or changes on the camera are quite significant. Things like the camera sensor, the image processor, the video specs and features, all of these things have been revamped. There's a lot of changes here and I don't want to bore you with specs, so let's just mention some of the most important or significant ones. It has a brand new 5th generation x CMOS sensor and the X processor as well. 40 frames per second, blackout free burst shooting and improved autofocus. It can do 6.2K open gate video recording, great for anamorphic lenses while recording ProRes internally. It has up to 7 stops of image stabilization and an incredible 5 million dot EVF. It has heavy duty weather resistance and it supports CF Express Type B cars giving you a dual car solution. And if you watched my previous video, then you know that this camera has two of my top three wanted features for new Fujifilm cameras. It lacks the built-in ND filter, but in reality, this camera is made to be fully rigged up if you're doing professional video work or doing sports photography or wildlife photography where you can shoot at really high shutter speeds as well. So, on paper, the camera sounds incredible. However, there's a lot of physical changes to the body as well, and these really affect how you use the camera and how it operates. Most notable is the removal of the dedicated ISO dial, the shutter speed dial, and the focus selector dial. Fully replacing these dials is a top display. And even the new lenses announced, the 150-600mm zoom lens and the 18-120mm zoom lens both lack the aperture dial as well. This will sort of guide users to live inside menus and digital settings. And this is sort of a deal breaker for me. It goes against my street photography philosophy of shooting with intentionality, shooting in manual mode only, having control of my settings and dials, not having to rely on navigating menus and diving into menus to change settings. And I completely understand not everybody enjoys that, but that is the reason why I buy and use and enjoy Fujifilm cameras because of the knobs, because of the dials, because shooting with intentionality. Removing dials and settings that make the shooting process enjoyable and make you want to use your camera and immerse yourself in the photography process is a big deal. That being said, this seems like an incredible camera made for a specific group of people. And it's okay if you're not part of that whole demographic. It's completely fine. You can still try it. Perhaps after using it and testing it quite a bit, I will change my mind and really enjoy the camera. Perhaps not. That is not the point. The point is that this camera alone is not enough for me to be worried about Fujifilm as a whole or the direction of the company for the following reason. During the online reveal, Fujifilm called the X-H2S their flagship APS-C camera. And that is a very specific thing to say. All this time, I thought the X-T series was the flagship camera. However, them announcing this new camera as a flagship camera really makes sense in terms of the direction they're going and the changes they made on the body as well. If you are creating a flagship camera that is supposed to compete with a rather similar market, then the camera has to be powerful, do both photo and video with emphasis on video mainly, 
and look and feel somewhat similar to what the other manufacturers make. It's okay for them to try to compete and try to grow as a company. And the X-H2S is exactly that. A camera that can stand on its own against Sony and Nikon and all the other manufacturers. We have seen how most YouTubers use a Sony camera to film their videos. Most videographers use them as well. It's not because those are fun cameras to use or really inspire you and want to get you up and running. No. I shoot these YouTube videos with a Sony ZV-1. It's not a fun camera to use and it does not inspire me in any way whatsoever. They're just good at what they do and convenient. My Sony ZV-1 just sits there all the time. Sometimes I even forget I have this camera. The only thing it does is that it helps me shoot somewhat decent looking videos like this and that is absolutely it. It doesn't inspire me, it doesn't make me want to go out there and shoot with it, nothing like that. And I think that's the main reason why most YouTubers use Sony cameras. They're just video workhorses and that is it. And honestly, that is what Fujifilm is trying to make. A flagship workhorse that can compete with the other manufacturers. As I mentioned, I personally do not like the removal of the dials. It's not the reason why I buy and use and enjoy using Fujifilm cameras. But after thinking about their positioning and the way they call the X-H2S their flagship camera, it does not really worry me. I personally do not think the company is changing drastically and eliminating those dials and options from all of their cameras. And if anything, some of those really high-end features may cascade down to the medium or the lower end models in the future. So the X-T5 for example or X-Pro4 whenever those come out. So, if them having a flagship line that looks and feels somewhat generic helps them compete, make more money, and bring those features to the medium and the bottom line, then so be it. On paper it looks great, but it's very expensive too, so I'll have to see how can I sort of maybe rent it and play with the camera, test it myself, and see what my findings are. So that is why I think Fujifilm is changing, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Change can be a positive. Change is the only constant in our lives. As always, I'm curious to know what do you think? Do you like the X-H2S? Does it match your style? Are you sort of in line to buy one? Share your thoughts in a comment down below. But that is it for today's video. If you found this video helpful or valuable, please like and subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and join my free newsletter as well. Thank you very much for watching, for giving me your time and your energy. And good luck with your creative process.